Good afternoon. Good afternoon. On behalf of my wife, Esther, and the brothers and sisters uh, at Baya Leba Chinese Methodist Church, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I want to thank your pastor, Reverend Patrick Lim, for being so gracious. Uh, I feel in my first assignment, <laughs> I get to have a second chance. I'm so thankful. Tolai uh, Chinese Methodist Church um, was my first assignment under the Chinese Annual Conference. And that meant a lot to me and still is. Uh, you guys uh, has a special place in my heart and I, I was just cannot express my joy to be able to worship with you today. Um, our sermon text today is taken from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And I've checked with uh, your pastor, Reverend Patrick Lim. He said that uh, you're familiar with the NIV 2011. That's the usual version. So I'll be using that uh, for the sermon. And the title of the sermon is The Revelation Through a Storm. Before we begin, may I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Father who is in heaven, you have the words of eternal life. Lord, we need your word. We cannot survive without that. Lord, please speak to us. Lord, help us. May we be able, our eyes be open, our ears be open, our hearts be open to receive, Father, the nourishment of our souls. That the truth of God be kept in our hearts <coughs> and will bear fruits that will glorify your holy name, that we will live life pleasing to you. Speak, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' most gracious name. Amen. The early 12 disciples of Jesus were Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Tatus, Judas Iscariot, John, Peter, Simon the Zealot, James the son of Zebedee, and James the son of Alphas. Now, have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered how these people came to know Jesus? And what made them decide to follow him? The Bible tells us that uh, for Bartholomew, he came to know Jesus through Philip. As for Matthew, he met Jesus while he was sitting at the tax collection. The Andrew, and Andrew came to know Jesus because he heard. He heard John the Baptist saying that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And after that, he tripped. Also, the money of John. I think they have different. First time that he met Jesus, he knew he did not believe that Jesus initially did not, but after we intimate. And he followed. They, they, the odd. That they left up and followed Jesus. Now back then. Would say that oh, oh he, he uh, Jesus yeah. 
God that takes away the sin of the world because we heard it from John the Baptist. We didn't understand. All the Jesus was someone special. Someone worthy to be the master. Someone who did them giving commitment to follow. And as they began to follow Jesus, they the word of God and the people his taught as one who has a And he did so never a talk. They also miraculous healings. But he people with some hand and question Jesus related keeping the even when they were sent to breaking the law, to cite proof and explanation of scripture with might. Furthermore, wherever there were large. Ask the twelve, who is Jesus? Oh, Jesus, have we ever had? It's the true servant of God has sent her from. That that they have given Jesus. We'll look at to verse thirty-five. Chapter four. We will go through the verse. Chapter 4, verse, an evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. Which day? A large crowd had gathered. Great number, so much. Uh, sat there to the people, the crowd. On the on the boat, so many troops. Parables. When Jesus has finished teaching, it was already evening. He then instructed his disciples to cross over to the other side of the lake. <laughs> now, though it was a lake and, and has fresh water and not sea water, for some reason which I do not know, they call it the Sea of Galilee. Jesus gave the instruction to cross the Sea of Galilee. And this is what the disciples did. One verse down, 36. Mark chapter 4, verse 36. Leaving the crowd behind, 
they took him, they took Jesus as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Can you see the phrase just as he was in the boat? Do you see it? Can, right? This phrase means Jesus did not leave the boat after he, he has finished his teaching. He stayed on the boat and let the disciples take him to the other side of the lake. We were also told that there were other boats with Jesus. This means after the, the crowd had dispersed, there were people in the crowd who took their own boats and to trail Jesus. And as they were crossing the lake, something dramatic happened. What is it? Verse 37. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Now, translated for us in the NIV Bible, come even when we are facing death. A peace that surpasses all our understanding, that keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now I need to, you to listen, listen carefully to this. It's important for us to take note that the saving of the disciples' life on this occasion in our text does not mean that the disciples would never die physically. It does not mean that. It does not mean that they would never die physically. The fact is that all of them eventually pass away. What it does mean is that with Jesus in their lives, they would never die prematurely. Never would die before God says their time is up on earth. Furthermore, when they do face death, they could face death with mega calm, with the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to keep their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This mega calm was available to these disciples, and this mega calm is also av available to us. God could. God could stop every storm that comes our way, be it small and great. However, God will allow certain storms to continue in our lives, to test our faith, to help us to grow to spiritual maturity. What we are sure of is that with Jesus in our lives, we will not die prematurely and we can have mega calm. We can have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to God, our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, even in the midst of mega storms. The mega calm came after Jesus commanded the wind and the waves to be quiet and still. Then Jesus turned to the disciples and said to them, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus rebuilt the disciples for the lack of faith. I believe. I believe the rebuke was not, was not for the lack of faith in his ability. 
for they have seen and they, they knew well that Jesus possessed great ability, tremendous power and authority. I believe Jesus was not rebuking them for the lack of faith in his ability. But he was rebuking them for their lack of faith in his character. The disciples have said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? In other words, the disciples were saying to Jesus, Jesus, you care only for yourself. You don't care about us. Friends, I think the lack of faith and the character of Jesus could also happen to all of us. Let me make a confession to you. There was one period of my life, dark moments of my life, when I was bullied by a group of people. I felt, I think, very much the same as how the disciples felt. I wanted to say to Jesus, Lord, Lord, Lord you just, just don't care, right? Lord, you just, just, you just don't care. You don't care for me at all. Don't you find, don't you know that I'm hurting, hurting so much? You don't care. I want to say that to Jesus by then. No, I know the offensive words, but that was truly how I was feeling deep inside me. Perhaps, my friend, you're going through a mega storm in your life. And you're feeling, Jesus, you don't care. You don't care about me. But I want to tell you, my friend, that is simply not true. Jesus cares. He loves you. He died for you. That proves his love for you. He loves you so much. So, 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 so much. He hears your cry. He knows you're hurting. And he will come. He will come and save you. Jesus may stop the storm, or he may not. He may want the storm to continue in your life, to test your faith, to grow you, to maturity. So man, no matter, no matter whether Jesus will stop the storm or not, one thing is for sure. He is right there beside you holding your hand and leading you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And He will bring good out of all your troubles. And His peace Jesus is the Prince of Peace and His peace that surpasses all understanding is available for you. That you can have mega calm 
even when you face mega storms. Jesus will see you through each and every storm in your life. Be small or great. Jesus scolded the disciples for their lack of faith in his character. What was their response? What, what was the disciples' response? Look with me to verse 41. Verse 41. They were terrified and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now translated for us in the NIV Bible is the word terrify. You can see the word, right? The word terrify. However, in its original language, Greek, two words were used instead of one. And the two words are Phobos and Miguel. Megal, we already said, is mega, right? What is phobos? Phobos is where we get the English word phobia. So combined together, it means mega fear. In other words, the disciples were in mega fear. Think about this. When the mega storm came, the disciples were in fear. But when they saw how Jesus commanded the wind and the waves to be quiet and still, and the wind and the waves obeyed him, they were in mega fear. Why? And they say, who is this? In other words, they fear Jesus more than they fear the mega storm. Why? Why did they fear Jesus more than they fear the mega storm? And why did they say, who is this? They say, who is this? Because they felt that they do not know who Jesus is anymore. All along, they thought that they knew who Jesus is. That Jesus is a man of God, a powerful miracle worker, a great teacher, a true servant of God, sent by God to, to help Israel defeat his enemies. But now, they felt that they do not know who Jesus is anymore. Because they knew, they knew from scripture that only God has control over the nature. They have read about God the creator in the book of Genesis. God the creator spoke the word and there was light. God spoke and there was light. God spoke and there was the sky, the sea, and so on and so forth. God spoke and the nature came to being. Only God has authority over nature. Only God has control over nature. Hence, when Jesus spoke the word, commanding the wind and the waves to be quiet and still, and when they saw, when they saw how the wind and the waves obeyed him, they were in mega fear. And they blurted out, who's this? They were in mega fear as they realized that they are 
standing in the presence of the Almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. A mega fear came over them. How about us? Who is Jesus? Do we know who Jesus is? Do we know Jesus only as a great teacher, a great miracle worker, a healer, a counselor, a brother, a friend? Do we know him? Do we know him also as the greater God? If we do, if we truly do, do, do we dare? Do we dare to use his name, to misuse his name, that whenever bad happens, we say, oh, Jesus, as a form of profanity? If we know, do we dare to come to the Holy Communion table to partake of his body and blood without first examining ourselves, without first repenting and confessing our sins? Jesus said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be in the midst of them. If we know who Jesus is, will we dare to attend worship service in a flippant manner? Coming to worship service late on purpose, dressing inappropriately, misbehaving ourselves, Who is Jesus? Do we know who he is? Do we have a mega fear for Jesus? A deep reverence for him? May God have mercy upon us and grant us grace that we truly know who Jesus is and be found bowing to him always with mega fear, with a deep reverence for his majestic being. Amen.